Dad? I think you got it that <laughs> This is a good one. Woo! Nice head shakes. Nice head shakes. Like edible knives? No, like... bigger. Oh, wow. Like bigger, bigger. Oh, wow. Oh, if I can grab them. Grab them. <laughs> yeah, baby. Dude. Heck yes. Hey, thanks for letting me hang out with you. Anytime, bro. Look at that giant. That was so sick. Holy crap. Dude. What? What is this? By the fire, fireside walleye catching. Holy smokes, that's so cool, dude. Check that out, baby. Yes. So fun, man. So I spend quite a bit of time on Malax each year, open water and ice, but I got a buddy who spends way, 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 way more time out here dissecting the water, breaking down the bite, and staying on the fish. So instead of listening to me blab for 40 minutes, why don't we let him talk about where, how, when, why he's catching walleyes out here now for the next month-ish. Hey guys, Brad Hawthorne. Well, I know a lot of guys are coming up to Mille Lacs this weekend and for the next few weekends. You know, we're sitting here in early January and a lot of guys are going, where should we start to look for walleyes? You know, you get up here on Friday at five o'clock at night, you get up here Friday at noon, where should you put your wheelhouse? What resort should you run out of? And I'm here to help you kind of go through my Fish Smart, Hummingbird Fish Smart app on how I have it set up and where you guys should be looking for walleyes this weekend. We're actually doing a little bit of a screen record right now. So I have, as you can see, my 30 foot contour highlighted. And the reason I have that highlighted is because that's usually where I find that transition. Right around that 30 foot mark within two or 300 feet of that is usually where you'll find that around the lake. So I'm gonna start here at this spot. And if you're coming up at five, anywhere past dark, the top of this guy in 27 feet, you see this? nice rock bar that's where i would go so if you're the guy coming up here after dark you want to be on tops of the reef and if you plan on coming up for the whole weekend and you're just looking for that night bite definitely choose those shallower edges of the structure but what you're going to want to do is be no shallower than 26 feet 26 to 32 feet of water is where we've been getting the fish for the last week or so. So remember that when you're coming up, you're gonna to wanna to choose those deeper locations. Now, if you come up and the top of that reef is taken, don't be afraid to dive in. You see that little 30 foot little bump in there? Don't be afraid to dive into that and place your wheelhouse there. The fish will come through there. It's all about finding those deer trails that the walleyes are using. And if the top of the reef is taken, Go ahead and take that inside turn, you know, right there. That is a great little spot too. So don't think, you know, if a cherry spot's taken for the weekend that you can't have it. Now, on to the daytime bite. If you get up here and you're concerned about a daytime bite and that's what you want to do, I would definitely have my fish house set up, my wheelhouse set up in 29 feet and over. So 29 to 32 feet. So that's where that green line or that, that where I have it shaded on my fish smart that is where I'm gonna be looking. So I'm looking at all this good stuff. So you see that little inside turn there, right, right there, that inside turn is a nice little area to start. And keep going down that, you see that little jog there, that little finger, that little outside and inside turn right in the middle of the screen? That is actually one of those spots that are overlooked on Mille Lacs that if a guy can get to it, if you can pay your resort or your guide or whoever to apply you to that spot, you're gonna catch fish because there's a reason that does that. And that's usually because that sand to rock, rock to gravel, there's a little transition there. And if you look out further from that, out in the 31 foot, you'll see that same kind of contour do that same thing. That's because there's usually something there. So you guys maybe say, Brad, how do I tell the difference between hard and soft bottom? All I have is 2D sonar and for instance, I'm gonna take this spot right here. This is a really good spot. I shouldn't be showing this one right now. But if you have 2D sonar, 
you're looking for your red band. If you're set up with a three color color palette, your deeper red band or a double echo. Now this is where the bottom is. Below the bottom is where you're looking, where a lot of people don't look. Below that bottom line. So if it's got a little line of yellow or a couple line of yellow, or, or if your red gets super thick and you get to start getting a double echo, that's how you know you're on rock. You're on really hard stuff. Soft bottom is going to look like this on your sonar. Your red line simply shrinks. If you have a quarter inch to start with, you're looking for your happy medium. If that red starts to get thicker, you're getting harder. If that red starts to get thinner, you are going to get softer. Now, if that it stays the same, you're doing parallel. You're not getting any, it's not getting any harder, any softer, whatever. You might be going the wrong direction and, and that's where you have to figure that out. Sometimes, don't get discouraged. Sometimes you have to walk two, 300 feet if you have traditional 2D sonar to figure this out. But sooner or later on these transition lines, you're going to find them, especially on the southeast corner of the lake, four and five mile gravel, you know, all the way up the east side of Mille Lacs and southeast, southwest corner is full of these transition lines. All you have to do is find them. So remember that with 2D sonar, thinner red means softer bottom, thicker red, double echo, double echo means rock, really thick red means hard bottom. So like this spot here that I have blown up, Keep drilling around this one, all of a sudden you'll see bammo. You're on a teeny little gravel bar right in the middle of nowhere. And next thing you know, you got your wheelhouse right. This is a spot on the spot type of deal where you can get one or two wheelhouses on that. And you're pretty much gonna be able to own that all, all winter. So now that's how we used to do it. That 2D sonar is how we used to find these transitions. And then we'd use cameras to verify that. It was actually, it, it, was, it was a long process. Now, simply how I do it, as I drop my 360 down, my Mega 360, and I have a picture of the bottom. I know exactly where those transitions are. I can scroll over, drop a waypoint right on, you know, the edges of this guy right here on the left or the right hand side of it or the north and the south end of it. And I know exactly where it is. Or I can simply, quite simply, drop waypoints all the way around this guy right here and place wheelhouses on it. This is going to last for the next few weeks, your next two or three weeks, this transition bite, this right off the mud flat bite, this, this rock to gravel bite, this you know gravel to mud bite. This is gonna continue on. It might continue on all year, but for the most part, this transition this deal is a January thing that we're cashing in on right now. So if you guys are interested in more of this, go ahead and set your Fish Smart app up if you don't have a lot of time, but make sure the biggest thing to do is once you find your spot, make sure you either drill a couple holes and make sure you're on that transition or on top of that reef and verify with 2D sonar or Mega 360 what you're actually on. So you got your wheelhouse down or your portable up or whatever you're doing, here's what's been working for me the last few weeks and I don't see it changing. Well, what we've seen is gold is making a comeback on Mille Lacs. Not that it ever went away, right? But gold is like, really key especially in that deeper darker water this is a bro bug spoon right here it's been a really hot one out of Mille Lacs. that spoon does not have a rattle in it and that's what you have to remember like sometimes having a rattle in a spoon is spooking the fish away so like you want to be mindful if you get fish coming in and leaving add a rattle or take a rattle away now the coffin minnow spoon this guy here and silver or gold has been awesome. I actually think this spoon is a little bit louder than a buckshot. And what you guys will notice with this spoon is when you drop it, it drops head first and flutters around a little bit. So just because it's a heavy hit and big spoon does not mean it's got zero action. Actually, it's got more action than a lot of the heavier spoons I've ever, ever used. So when I'm working a coffee minnow spoon, this spoon is top heavy. That's the one thing to remember. Slack line is your friend. When I mean slack line, when you're jigging this spoon and you're trying to get the most out of it, when you're trying to get it to roll and flip and tumble, you wanna go slack line. That doesn't mean jig and then drop it. That means jig and then slack line of six to 12 inches to get that spoon to tumble and fall and do what it should do. That's also gonna make it rattle. It's gonna make a lot of noise. The other thing that happens with this spoon is the heavy side of this spoon if you do the reset, which I like to call the reset, if you get denied by a fish and you drop it right on the bottom, you smack it on the bottom, whether that's in the mud and you make a big poof, or whether that's on rock or sand or gravel and you make a thud or a ding or whatever you're trying to do, you see if that fish reacts to that lure going down and making a bunch of noise. If he does, if he comes right back 
I leave it sit there and a lot of times just slowly pick it up and a lot of times that fish will hit it right off the bottom. So that's how I work the coffin minnow spoon. Now if I do that whole deal two or three times and that fish goes away, I'm going right to a forged minnow spoon, I'm cutting my action in half, I'm working it tighter to the bottom and I'm starting to get more finesse. The coffin minnow spoon is a hard hitting, hard rolling, it's a bait to find out how aggressive the fish are. Now if you just sit and wiggle it, and you're getting bit, you should probably go to something different like buckshot, something that's a little bit calmer down the line. But it's a good spoon to start with. It's definitely found its way into my box, as you can see. And for years to come, I'll ultimately think, cough middle spoon on many different bodies of water, including Mille Lacs, is gonna be number one for figuring out the bite. So remember, golds, silvers, and during that nighttime peak bite, you're gonna wanna be adding those UV colors. This guy right here has been my all-time favorite all around, whether you come day, night, evening, morning, whatever you're doing, everyone knows Black's orange, black chartreuse, they love it. Stick with this as a good indicator. Start with the spoon, and if they're coming in and leaving, coming in and leaving, go to silver, then go to gold, and you'll start getting bit.